Hey guys, wanted to take a moment here to talk about timing. I get a lot of questions about this, about the distributor and ignition wires for the 301 Turbo. So let's talk about timing here for a second. I'm going to take the distributor out of this car. It has a 1980 style distributor. Uh, just to clarify, the 1980 turbo cars get mechanical uh, timing with a vacuum advance and having weights and springs inside the distributor. So I will, uh, when I get this one out, we'll go into it with a little more detail. This was also available on the 81 Canadian built or export cars. The 81 cars that were built here in the States, they came with computer controlled timing. So the distributor was locked out. There was no mechanical advance. There was no vacuum advance. This car was retrofitted with the 80 style distributor so that we had mechanical timing control. I'm going to convert it over to an MSD Pro Billet distributor so that the Phytech can control the timing and I can set my own uh, distributor timing advance curve. So let's take a quick look here. Usually before I take out a distributor, I want to make sure that I'm on top dead center of number one piston. And what that means is top dead center of the compression stroke. So the piston is going to have to be all the way up to the top and it's going to be with both valves closed and on the compression stroke. Usually you can do this by removing a spark plug, putting your thumb over the end of the spark plug hole, turning it over until you feel air pressure trying to blow your thumb off the hole, the spark plug hole. Since the distributor is already in the car on this one, I'm going to take a different approach with it. First, let me try to clarify something. I get asked, where is number one spark plug wire on the distributor cap for this car? That's kind of a trick question. It depends if the distributor was ever removed from the car and when it was reinstalled, was it put into the factory position or not? Technically, number one on the distributor cap can be any of the posts, depending on where the distributor was dropped into the engine and where the rotor was pointing when the piston of number one cylinder was at top dead center. This car here is set up in the factory way. So if you feel that your car is factory, if you take a look back here, usually number one ends up being this spark plug wire right here. And then it goes in a counterclockwise rotation, which is opposite of Chevy. So a lot of times, too, I get where, hey, the car doesn't run, I'm, I'm spitting flames out the carburetor. Check your firing order. It's still 18436572, but it's in a counterclockwise rotation. So this being number one, then we go to number eight, four, three, six, five, seven, and then ending with two. Since this one's already set up, we know this one runs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the distributor cap off, and I'm going to rotate the engine over until I make the rotor point to the area of number one spark plug wire on the cap. I will also watch the harmonic balancer to see where the mark is on the timing mark on the timing indicator. I get you on a Pontiac or a 301 anyway. It is right down. Let's get a little better view. It is right there. The 301 gets a plastic timing tab, uh, nothing like the 400 cars where it was cast into the timing cover. This one actually is nice because it reads farther on the timing scale than some of the cast uh, 400 versions. This one will actually, I believe, go to about 26 degrees, maybe 28, which is really nice to, to have because in another video later, I'll probably show how to double check that the distributor is working correctly as far as your mechanical advance on a 1980 uh, distributor. We'll probably do it on my 80 pace car for another video. I ignore the coolant mess that I made there. I took out a water pump bolt. <laughs> and yeah, also ignore the MSD distributor or the uh, coil right there. It's just temporarily mounted for right now till we get things up and working. So let me get the distributor cap off and then I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about as far as where the rotor is pointing and so on. Okay, hey, we have the cap off. Let's take a look back here. That's the rotor. Notice that it's, paint, it's uh, pointing towards the firewall there. And that is because I've already rotated the engine over to bring it towards where number one usually sits on the distributor cap, or at least where it was on this car. 
And if we can, and how we verify that is by looking at the harmonic balancer. And then we'll try to zoom in here. Not the best shot, but you can see that the timing mark is on the zero. So we're at top dead center of number one. Pretty easy to do. Now it's all I gotta do is pull the clamp for the distributor and then we'll yank it out and get the MSD one to set back in there. And I'll set it in kind of the same way. Now when putting the distributor back in, the gear that meshes with the camshaft is cut at an angle. So you wanna rotate, when looking at the top of it, you wanna rotate uh, clockwise just a little bit past where your uh, number one position is going to point and then drop it in there. And what it's going to do is it's going to rotate as it falls down into the engine, hopefully lining up close to where you want it to for number one to point. Now, when you're doing that, there may be an issue where you don't align the oil pump shaft and the distributor won't go down all the way. An easy trick is that if that happens, you got it where you want it, but it won't go down all the way. That's all you got to do is rotate the engine over by hand. Put the wrench on the front of the harmonic balancer, start rotating. You're already meshing with the gear of the camshaft, so you don't have to worry about losing your timing. It's just going to rotate until, it, until, the, uh, until the flat part of the distributor shaft mates with the oil pump shaft, and it'll fall right into place. So you won't have to worry about messing up anything with the timing. It works out pretty well. While we're looking at this and while we're looking at the rotor, something I want to bring up for all you guys that have an 80 or an Export 81 that's still running mechanically controlled uh, timing advance with the weights and springs and the vacuum advance. As you can see this one here, we got the vacuum advance right there. The rotor. If you notice, I can push on it against spring pressure. It rotates and then comes back. Perfect. That's a good working mechanical advance right there. That's what we want. I've had half a dozen cars, 80 model turbo cars, especially ones with low miles that have been sitting for a while. That was all gummed up, stuck, whatever you want to call it. Could not get the timing to set correctly. Or you did get the timing to set and the car was a total dog. And the reason why is because you can't get any mechanical advance out of it to allow the engine to start building more power. So in those cases, usually I take the distributor out, take it all apart, clean everything off, get everything working again, lube it all back up, put it all back together. If you don't want to pull the distributor out, you can get away with spraying it down with some, some lubricants, maybe some WD-40, maybe even spraying in some brake cleaner to try to clean off any you know guck or gunk or whatever you want to call it that's kind of dried up in there and get it freed up while it's in the car. I've, I've successfully done that before. It takes a little more time, but it does work. But that is, that is a critical thing. And like I said, we'll probably post another video later on how to check that that mechanical advance is working properly using a timing light on the harmonic balancer. But we'll, we'll save that one for another time. So right now, I'm going to get this distributor out, get the MSD in there, start hooking things up. Let's get the Phytech going and get the timing control going.